Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the summer of 2017 Kepler discovery slash announcement that made the headlines once again. Now currently we're actually going to a planet that was discovered by Kepler two years ago on uh, July of 2015 and this was Kepler 186f. This was the first Earth-like planet that was discovered by Kepler. And since then, quite a lot more were discovered and are now quite well known in the uh, space community. So today we're going to talk about what has been discovered in 2017 and why it's also kind of important. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So this beautiful planet, uh, which actually originally was uh, seen by Kepler in 2014, but confirmed as a planet in 2015, is known as Kepler 186f. It's a cool desert in space engine, and it looks pretty cool. It, it looks very Earth-like, although the temperatures here are a little bit cold at minus 96 degrees Celsius. But this is not the object we're going to be taking a look at today. As a matter of fact, we're not going to be taking a look at any specific object because most of them have not really been added to any of the simulations I often use just yet because the discovery is very, very brand new. So in June of 2017, NASA made yet another uh, announcement about Kepler telescope finding. And the finding basically was in regards to 219 new planet candidates and 10 of these candidates may actually be Earth-like. Uh, they're still not confirmed and they're still kind of just theoretical on paper, but once confirmed, they'll actually probably get cool titles and will most likely make the handline again. So um, if you actually want to explore these particular planets that were discovered, you can check out a website known as uh, NASA Exoplanet Archive. I'm posting the link for this in the description. And here um, you can actually see that there's uh, almost 4,500 candidates already. And uh, many of these are multi-planetary systems and 3,500 were already confirmed. You can actually go on the bottom here and check out the confirmed planets that are already in existence. All of these are basically just tabulated and just have a name and uh, the title of the planet and of course their specifications and how they were discovered and where they were discovered and when they were discovered. If you're into this kind of data, check this out. You can actually click on individual planets and it gives you all of the information about it as well. So this is a kind of like for the nerdy ones out there. If you really want to know more about the planets that were discovered, check it out. Um, but all in all though, if you actually kind of wonder what it all looks like, there's a really cool site I mentioned previously called asterank.com. This is by a person named Ian Webster. And he made this really cool visualization of um, all of the, or I guess not all, but a lot of the exoplanets that were discovered to date and how they would look like in our own solar system. So uh, you can kind of see the larger objects are the gas giants, the smaller objects are uh, terrestrial planets and uh, the temperature here is indicated from blue being cold to red being hot to green being awesome and you can see there's quite a lot of uh, exoplanets out there that have earth-like orbits and are in the habitable zone of their own stars and so this is a pretty awesome visualization there's also another simulation that will hopefully one day have all of these newly discovered objects that i often use as well and this one is called NASA's eyes on exoplanets and here you can actually learn more about the Kepler discoveries and specifically the Kepler mission. Now if you if you don't actually know anything about Kepler it's a very large telescope that's um, kind of flying on its own in a heliocentric orbit uh, lagging behind our planet Earth. It's not actually an Earth orbit and uh, this telescope has been pretty good at discovering quite a lot of planets. You can kind of see this is what its lens looks like and this is the region of space it uh, studied for a long, long time. And then it basically discovered all of these stars in, in this region. And also now in these particular regions as well with um, extraterrestrial planets, with exoplanets. You can kind of see quite a lot of them in uh, Isona exoplanets. All of the confirmed ones are already there. But unfortunately, the candidates are often not really shown here. So until those 219 planets are actually confirmed, they're not going to be added to the simulation. But the interesting discovery here is that 10 of those 219 were Earth-like. 
in terms of size and we're in the so-called um, habitable zone of their uh, of their stars so for example let's actually look at Kepler 1 at 86 here in the simulation and you'll see that um, this is essentially a star with quite a lot of planets discovered ar uh, around it and Kepler 186f is the one that actually is located in the in the so-called habitable zone so this is a one of interest to us and so 10 more of such planets were discovered and interestingly um, they orbit around stars that are relatively similar to our own sun as well uh, kepler 186 is unfortunately not like our star it's actually um, what's known as a red dwarf it's an m type star and uh, it's a lot uh, less dim than the sun it's uh, only about half the mass of the sun and it also has a tendency to be a lot more active than the sun in terms of releasing quite a lot of radiation so maybe just maybe kepler 186 is not particularly habitable because if there's a lot of radiation coming from 186 it will most likely strip Kepler 186F of any atmosphere and water, which we need. But the other 10 stars that were discovered might actually be uh, or give us a lot more promise for both habitability and, of course, life. So there's another thing that was actually interestingly discovered by the scientists here, and and that's in relation to the kinds of planets that were found so quite a lot of the planets that kepler discovered fit either into this category which is basically planets that are um, radius wise about at least two radii of earth and maybe until about three radii of earth so these are called mini neptunes or small neptunes uh, and these are slightly more massive than earth but a lot more large in terms of size because of the gases or are a lot Earth-like, so anywhere between 1 to 1.5 radii of Earth. But then there's actually a gap here. Not too many planets were found in between these, suggesting that uh, there's actually a kind of a, a type of a planet that is very common, and another type that's very common, and other types like gas giants and um, smaller terrestrial planets are not very common at all, and also anything between 1.5 to 2 radii of Earth is also not very common either. And this uh, suggested to the NASA, NASA scientists um, that there is actually a kind of a divide in terms of exoplanet, uh, I guess you could call it family tree. So from the protoplanetary disk here, we'll have super Earths, basically uh, planets that are larger than Earth in terms of both size and mass. We'll have mini Neptunes, we'll have nothing in between them, and then we'll have giant planets. And of course, there's terrestrial planets as well in there uh, that are not shown here. Another way of visualizing this is kind of like uh, using this particular exoplanet population. So here we have hot Jupiters, we have cold gas giants, we have ocean worlds and ice giants, rocky planets similar to Earth, lava worlds, and the frontier here, I guess, refers to everything in between. So there's a, a kind of a new um, definition for what a planet is and what kind of planets uh, do exist out there and most specifically how they might actually be formed so we're actually redefining the definition of um, planetary creation using these new studies so in other words during the assembly uh, of the planets when they kind of come from the small particles a lot of them will have rocky cores and then if you add a lot of gas to those cores and um, add a lot of heat to them they'll turn into mini neptunes and if you uh, add a little bit of gas and uh, some heat you'll get super earths so this is a pretty interesting way of reformulating how various planets are actually made and if you actually want to find out more about those 10 um, Earth-like exoplanets that were discovered, they're all kind of listed here. Specifically in orange are the ones that are of the most interest to us. And they do have very unusual designations, but interestingly, this uh, kind of shows you both the size of the planet and where it's located in terms of uh, the habitable zone, basically. So this is the line we're really interested in. There is Earth right there, and any of these planets very close to Earth are very Earth-like, both in size and the amount of energy they receive from their parent star. So these are the planets we'll definitely want to take a look at in the future. And as you can see, Mars is here, it's a little bit farther away, whereas Venus is here in the hotter region. And so maybe this planet right here that was kind of mentioned would be too hot for us to live on. And just to give you a final overview of what all of this looks like, uh, including all of the previous planets, exoplanets we've discovered, this is essentially it. So this is the size of the planet, this is its orbital period, 
And basically, it kind of gives you an idea of how uh, much variety there is in terms of both sizes and orbits and, of course, temperatures of various exoplanets we've discovered so far. So finding another Earth is going to be very difficult. But this is what Kepler's mission is, and this is what Kepler is for, and so it's going to be uh, very busy in the next few years looking for more of these exoplanets and trying to discover more planets similar to Earth by looking at this one region of space and consistently sending data back to Earth. Until then, though, we're going to have to deal with the, with the fact that we might not find a new home anytime soon, so we need to be careful with what we do to our own Earth. And let's just escape Kepler-186f. Hopefully, all of these planets will be added to Space Engine as well in the future, and we'll get to explore them in this video game. Anyway, if you've learned something from this video, and if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games, and someone who likes space stuff. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. Let's escape our beautiful galaxy. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.